In this video, I want to talk about what to do after taking the Google Data Analyst Professional Certificate or any other data analyst certificate you may have taken so far. Specifically, I want to talk about how to build a resume from scratch and what you should include and how you should frame the wordings of the skills you've gained so far. We'll also touch on whether or not you need a portfolio project and what sort of portfolio project should fit into your portfolio. And lastly, I'll point you in the direction of where you need to start looking for jobs. And without further ado, let's jump in. What's up guys, Wally here, welcome back to the channel. Let's quickly do a recap of the Google Data Analyst Professional Certificate and the skills covered so far. I'm using the Google Data Analyst Professional Certificate because it's one of the popular data analyst courses over the past year or so. And in the Google Data Analyst Professional Certificate, you went through how to use spreadsheets to clean and manipulate and analyze data. You also learned how to use scripting language, SQL, to extract data from a database. In addition to SQL, you learn how to perform visualizations using spreadsheets and Tableau. You use Tableau to create and design an interactive dashboard. And then you went ahead to use RStudio to clean and manipulate data sets using different R packages. You documented the analysis and the visualization in a research style documentation using R Markdown. Finally, you wrapped up with an optional capstone project. And in the capstone project, you were provided two business cases which you use to practice solving a problem from start to finish. The capstone project course also pointed you in the direction of resources on how to create a project portfolio and also how to practice your pitch. Now, if you didn't take the Google Data Analyst Professional Certificate and what you took was the IBM Data Analyst Professional Certificate or any other Data Analyst Professional Certificate for that matter, they tend to follow a similar path. They start with the basics, Excel, move up a notch with scripting language, in this case, SQL, dives deep into programming language, either Python or R, and then finally wraps up with a capstone project. Now, for anyone who has diligently gone through this process, then you already have the skills necessary to get an entry-level job. What is next for you is to start applying for jobs and frame all that you've learned in a way that would look attractive to any recruiter that picks up your resume. But you shouldn't start applying for jobs until you've reviewed and redesigned your resume. The aim of your resume is to get your foot into the door. And so what you want is your resume to stand out in terms of design, keywords, and framing. So let's walk through how you should go about this. Before we start designing, let's determine the things that must go into this resume. First is your name and then your contact information, which includes your address your phone number, your email address, and your LinkedIn account. Next will be your educational background in reverse chronological order, and then after your most relevant work experience. For an entry level, it is expected that you do not have any, so it is fine. But that said, you'll need a list of whatever work experience you may have, including internships, placements, or summer vocational jobs that you may have held in the past. Finally, you should also include links to your portfolio projects, optional but super helpful, and that's it, that's all. As an entry level, all you need for now is a one-pager resume, one that doesn't take more than 10 seconds to scan through because you don't have any experience and it is important that you respect people's time and not fill your resume with irrelevant information. Which means if you've held lots of jobs in the past, then you should decide what goes into your resume. All right, so the next step is drafting out and wording your work experience section. And for now, we'll focus on the data analyst part. As a data analyst with zero experience, it is super important that your resume is worded right. You must try to keep it direct, catchy, and straight to the point. Using all the right keywords and phrases to ensure that when your resume is picked up by a recruiter, you will stand a chance to move to the next stage. So let's go over the seven key things you may want to write in your resume as an entry level data analyst that has completed a data analyst certificate. Number one, performed SQL queries to collect, sort, and filter data to produce reports, used SQL functions to clean and convert data types into usable formats, Analyze data sets in Excel using pivot tables and functions to clean, sort, and filter data. Created data visualizations using Excel and Tableau. Communicated findings of data analysis results to stakeholders. 
used design thinking to create an interactive dashboard in Tableau, analyzed and visualized data in R using R packages, specifically Tidyverse, ggplot2, and Plotly. Feel free to adjust and modify this as required. For instance, if you took the IBM Data Analyst Professional Certificate, Python was used instead of R, then in that case, you could say, analyze data using Python libraries, specifically Pandas, Matplotlib, and Seaborn. Now, a question I get most times when it comes to CV by entry-level data analysts is under which section do they insert the skills they've learned? Should it go under the, your educational background as a certificate or should it go under your work experience section? Let's just say it depends on your work history. If you have never gotten a job before and you don't have any relevant work experience, then maybe you should include the wording in your educational section as what you learned taking a certificate. But the other option is to have it both ways, adding it to your work history as one of the things you are applying on your current job and also in your educational section as one of as what you learn taking a certificate. If you follow the channel, you know I've always advocated for putting your skills to use for free with a friend or family member that owns a small business. What that does is it helps you build competency and also gives you work experience that you can put on your resume. So let's say after you completed your certificate, you were able to apply these skills on a job where you used Excel. You can reward the analyzed data set in Excel using pivot tables and functions to clean and sort data to be used Excel pivot tables and functions to create monthly reports to evaluate team performance and highlight areas for improvement. Now that we have the outline complete, the next thing is to scout for resume design templates. Go on Google and browse through the many resume templates that you see on there and select the one you like. Be careful not to choose a resume template that is too loud and will overshadow the main content of your resume. Now, once you find what you like, um, it's time to start designing. If the template you got online is easily editable, as such, there's no need to design the resume just replace the information there to your own information. Otherwise, you have to design your resume from scratch. Now that you're done with designing your resume, take all that information and update your LinkedIn profile for now. As time goes on, you can tweak your LinkedIn profile to suit what you want. The idea is to make sure that your LinkedIn profile is not blank. One thing that most people say these days, and I've also said it a few times, is to have a project portfolio but how relevant are they and can you get a job without one? The simple and straightforward answer is yes, you can get a job without a project portfolio. Not all recruiters and companies care about project portfolio. That said, if you can put together one, I recommend that you do. In a worst case scenario, use the capstone project in your data analysis certificate and add your own flavor to it. Maybe add an extra layer of analysis that wasn't covered in the business case. You should not allow an absence of a project portfolio hold you back from applying confidently to any role. Let me also say that I've seen some project portfolio and I wondered to myself, is it not better that you do not have at all? You see things like blank GitHub pages, scanty information, disorganized write-ups, and those sort of project portfolio can even screen you out of contention for a job. So if you are going to do it, make sure you do it right. Otherwise, don't have one. Anyway, once you have that done and you are set to start applying for jobs, the three best places to start looking for jobs right now are LinkedIn, Indeed, and Monster. So that's it for me today. If you found value out of this video, do give it a like and subscribe for more content like this. One announcement before I go, I'll be starting a data analyst community group on Discord. So if you want to be part of that, Links to that will be in the description below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.